My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. This episode is brought to you by FX. From executive producer Ryan Murphy comes the first installment of FX's American Sports Story. The limited series charts the rise and fall of NFL superstar Aaron Hernandez and explores the disparate strands of his identity, his family, his career, his suicide, and their legacy in sports and American culture. FX's American Sports Story, Aaron Hernandez, premieres September 17th on FX. Stream on Hulu. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, Missed Connections, Part 1, by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another week of Relationship Optimizing. I am your host, Greg Audino. How is everybody doing? Hoping no one out there has a case of the Mondays today. I personally am feeling pretty peachy because today I'm narrating a post by Colin Wright on non-traditional relationships, something worth discussing more and more. Also, this post's a bit longer than usual, so I am splitting the article in two. I'll read the first half today, and you guessed it, finish the rest tomorrow. So, let's get right into part one and start optimizing your life. Missed Connections, Part 1, by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com Borake is a weird place to be single. I'm reminded of this as a server at one of the restaurants near my apartment drops off my food, a napkin, and fresh commentary. Why are you always here alone? Always here just yourself with no one else? I shrug and smile. She accepts this as an answer, thankfully. I found that any other response provokes well-meaning but unwelcome matchmaking attempts. A few days ago, I had a similar interaction with a mail server, but the question was whether I was in Borake with anyone else. I told him no, and less than five minutes later, a pretty female manager came over to speak to me, to make sure everything was up to par, to find out where I was staying, and to ask how long I would be there. After dinner, a number was written on my receipt. I'm guessing it was hers, but it could have been the server's. Either case would have been flattering, but would also run opposite to what I'm trying to accomplish here in the Philippines. And what am I trying to accomplish? A good think, mostly. A step back and a reassessment. Some writing, certainly. But the writing is a byproduct of the internal observation. I keep stringent tabs on my state of mind, my habits, my purpose. These are things I allowed to gather cobwebs for a significant chunk of my teens and twenties. And ever since I started paying them mind again back when I was 24, my entire life and lifestyle have changed for the better. Each day is a step above the last each and every moment worth treasuring. There are downswings, certainly, but nothing major, nothing of note. For nearly seven years, life has been truly wonderful, primarily because I started paying attention. My current additional level of attention, this period of extra special mind care, is the result of changes I'm considering, some that I've already experimented with, and some that I can feel coming but don't yet know the shape of. One such change is this trip itself. My model for exploring the Philippines isn't radically different from what I've done before, but there are enough differences in the specifics that I'm curious to see how I respond to it as compared to my usual four-month framework. I want to know how streamlining my flat-finding process impacts my experience of a place. I want to know how living a month in each location is different from four. The travel itself isn't the only aspect of my life with which I'm fiddling. I've been seriously considering diving into other media spheres, looking at an increasing number of TV-related opportunities, even considered starting my own customized, non-standard production project, perhaps while waiting for something more mainstream to become concrete, or even instead of the orthodox option. But what about social media? How much should I be investing there? And what benefits will I gain with more effort implemented here, less there, and by adding entirely new platforms into the mix? I've been writing books for a while, but there are new options available in how they're sold and marketed. Does having a longer presale period help or hinder the first week's numbers? Should I be investing more in my drum banging when a new book launches, or can I continue to get away with my usual low key marketing strategy? If I change something in this formula, would a good book flop? Would I kill an income stream? Would I put my lifestyle in jeopardy because I cut off a flow of revenue 
or because I opted into a responsibility that requires me to have interactions that I find to be ethically questionable. And how about relationships? The last time I had a conventional relationship was in 2009. It was a good partnership with a wonderful person, and it led me to a period in which I questioned everything and recognized something that I always knew, but was afraid to admit to myself. The standard model isn't for me. I don't want kids. I don't think the traditional concept of marriage would fulfill me or the type of person I'm into. And I find limitations, particularly those that imply ownership of another person or that limit them in any way, to be against my values. In the many years since then, I've experimented and rejiggered the formula. What I've settled on since then, a model I've found to be a good fit for me and my type, are long-term open relationships. These allow for the shared growth with another person, but without restrictions that don't jive with my lifestyle and how I want to treat another person. That said, I often go many months at a time without so much as a date, much less dating anyone. This is sometimes the result of living in a place that isn't conducive to non-standard relationships, but sometimes it's intentional. Sometimes I say, no, let's just focus on me for a while. This is one of those moments. Coming off of a recent wonderful partnership that was a little unexpected, I've been hankering for some me time, a little bit of psychological distance which allows me to more easily focus on personal growth and my needs, rather than sharing my mind space with someone else who I'm missing, whose presence I crave. These me moments are grand because, although they can be lonely, they also force me to consider where I want to be, not where I am. When you're with someone else, you're in the moment because you both need to be on the same page. When you're alone, you can focus on some future moment, some new place, because there's no one to accidentally leave behind, no one whose buy-in you require in order to make changes in yourself. My situation stands out like a sore thumb here on the island. Boracay is a place where people honeymoon. It's where you bring a date you want to impress. Even the locals are all paired off. The jovial, primarily ex-military expats and their tiny Filipino wives spend much of their time together eating and drinking and sitting near spots where they were moments ago eating and drinking. There are couples from Germany and Finland and the States ambling about as well, though they're lost in the deluge of Chinese tourists who move in packs of 10 to 40, their multitude overwhelming all nearby tables, chairs, booths, and footpaths. Even these great swarms of people, with their matching t-shirts and backpacks, tend to be paired off. An odd number in Boracay is an odd thing indeed. Relationships are considered by many to be challenging, difficult, to be points of stress in one's life. These downsides are tolerated because the upsides are worth it, of course, but I don't understand the draw of such relationships. Why would you fight to propagate something that isn't helping you get where you want to be, and that isn't allowing you to live the life you desire? One of the main reasons people don't end toxic relationships, I think, is that they're afraid to be alone. There's a deep-seated fear in many that to be alone is to be a failure, to be lost and rudderless, to be a castaway from that which once connected them to a wider world. If they don't have their partner, a partner, any partner, they have no plans, no aspirations, and no dates to keep. They identify as being one half of a whole, rather than being whole all by themselves. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Missed Connections by Colin Wright of ExileLifestyle.com. George Clooney and Brad Pitt's new movie, Wolves, is on Apple TV Plus September 27th. That's where I want you to be now. So if you want to see George Clooney and Brad Pitt, go to Apple TV Plus. You got to start the story there. Or if you want to see Brad Pitt and George Clooney, go to Apple TV Plus. I am enjoying the show. And if you want to see their new movie, Wolves, you can't do it, I'm going to help you out. I can do it. So do it. Definitely go to Apple TV Plus. Admit it. It's cool. Okay, fine. It was very cool. Wolves. Streaming September 27th on Apple TV Plus. Rated R. Excited to start Colin's work. It goes without saying that we all have different needs at different points in life. Thus, it is important to reflect on how those unique needs apply to things that we all take part in that tend to be done the same way, whether they be relationships, maybe education, work, and more. So, We'll see what else Colin has to say about that tomorrow. Meanwhile, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm looking forward to sharing the rest of Colin's material with you tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.